So today I'd like to talk about um, some interesting numbers called subcubic graph numbers. Before we get to the numbers, I have to talk about what subcubic graphs are. But first of all, I'll explain what a simple graph is. And it's a pretty simple thing. It's just a bunch of dots we call nodes. And then some of them might be joined to each other by lines we call edges, some might not, something like that. So that's an example of a, a graph. With graphs, the only important thing is which nodes are joined to which other nodes. So there's no idea of position, nodes don't have a location, and edges don't have a length or anything. It's just which nodes are joined to which other nodes. Okay, so that's a, a, a graph. To make it a simple graph, we have to impose a couple of extra rules. One is that you're not allowed to have one node joined to itself by an edge. And the other thing is we're not allowed to have two nodes joined by parallel edges. Any two nodes are joined by at most one edge. Okay, so that's what a, a simple graph is. Okay, I'm with you so far. Excellent. So I want to explain um, what it means for one simple graph to be hiding inside another one. So if we take a graph, just a triangle graph, then we'll have another one over here. So we might have something like this. It's got a few extra bits and pieces, but it's sort of fairly obvious that you can find this one hiding here, right? You've got, there's a copy of the first one in the second one. But there's a little bit more to it than that which is that this first graph, the triangle is also hiding if we sort of take one of its edges and sort of pin a node halfway along it. That's also hiding in there. The technical term for, uh, for this is being a topological minor, but I'm just gonna say hiding. That's what it means for one simple graph to be hiding another. All the graphs we're looking at at the moment are subcubic, which means basically if you look at a node, you can see zero, one, two, or at most three edges coming out of it, not four, not allowed to have four edges coming out of it. You can for a graph, um, but not for a subcubic graph. So I think that's the, uh, the basic setup now um, for subcubic simple graphs and what it means for one to be hiding inside another. So then there's a challenge. I'm gonna give ourselves a challenge of drawing a sequence of subcubic simple graphs. And the rules are as follows. The first one can have at most one node. The second one can have at most two, third one can have at most three, and so on. And the rule is that no graph can be hiding in any of the later ones, okay? And then the question is how long a sequence can we build following those rules, okay? Okay. Okay. And actually, I mean, it's not very interesting to start with. <laughs> so the answer is if you've got at most one node, there's not a lot to play with. We've got one node, right? Or we could have zero, then we stop. Uh, and the next thing we can do is just have, this is my picture of the empty graph. Okay, the empty graph has got no nodes or edges. So we have to, a what single node graph and then a, an empty graph, and then there's no further we can go. So we've done, okay. Um, so that's not terribly exciting. And what I'll write here is SSCG zero equals two. Uh, so a simple subcubic graph, and then the zero, we'll come back to in a moment, is two, because that's the longest sequence we could do. We could have made a shorter sequence, we could just put the, the zero graph straight away. This is the longest one we can do, okay? Okay, so that's the longest we could do with what? With where, where we start with at most one node, and then at most two nodes, and then at most three nodes. Why and, couldn't we do another one after that? Why couldn't? Because any, ah, uh, yeah, it's a good question, because, because any graph you could put here which has any nodes, is going to have this first one hiding, hiding. in it. Hiding, and yeah. that's why that you can't put you can't two put there or anything, because zero is hiding in it. Zero is hiding in anything afterwards, yeah. even if there are no nodes. Yeah. Anything which has got any nodes at all has got the first one hiding in it. That's why we've run out, yeah. So then, same thing again, but this time we give ourselves a head start, okay? So this time, I'm going to start with at most two nodes then the most three nodes. So you've gotten rid of that. And we could still put that one in here if we want. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be two, yeah. but two is gonna be a better option, right? You've gotten rid of that constraint. I've gotten rid of that constraint. I'm just increasing the constraints just by one. So this is gonna be a subcubic graph number one. And the, what this one is, it's like a head start. So the best we can do here is gonna give ourselves that graph to start with. We would be allowed to have put that one, but uh, this is obviously a better choice because this is that's hiding in everything. This is still hiding in a lot, right? So e that's hiding in any graph which has got any edges. Yeah. So all the all the subsequent graphs can't have any edges, but we can still do something, right? We can have that, right? That's now three nodes, no edges. So this is not hiding in there. But now, if we want to carry on. We can't have three nodes because that's going to be hiding in any graph which has got three or more nodes. So the best we can do now is go down to two and go down to one. And then finally we'll have our empty graph. So we go one, two, three, four, five. 
So the SSCG1 is going to be 5. So then the next question is going to, I think it's obvious what we're going to do, right? We're going to look at this subcubic graph with a head start of 2, right? So that means the first one's going to have 3, and the next one can have at most 4, and so on. So, I mean, we could get started. I mean, quite a good choice, a first choice. So there's, there's more of choice here. We, there's lots of different things we could try, but probably quite a good one to try is to put a triangle graph in here, right? So what do you think, Brady? How far do you think we carry on this sequence? You have caught me out before. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's not going to blow up too badly yet. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to guess 27. 27? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's just, that's but not based on your mathematics. <laughs> it's a bit, little bit bigger than that. So actually the, the best you can do here is bigger than 10 to the 10 to the 28. Go away. So it's, it has blown up quite a long way. Do you know what the second graph in the sequence is that goes in the... Well, I think it's this one here. Okay. A lot of... I can't believe that. <laughs> So a, a lot of the work, the Googleology, Googleology is a good word for this. It's a study of big numbers. So a lot of the Googleology on this was done by a guy called Adam Goucher, and this is uh, his, his estimate. And oh, so it's not known the number. Uh, it is. I mean, I think it's. Well, he, he's constructed a sequence of greater than, uh, of this length. Um, I don't think there's actually a proof that that is the longest possible. So it might be even bigger, but I think the general consensus is that. Um, so, so his sequence did end. He, he, he did come to an end. He just doesn't know if there's a longer one. Okay, so that's, that's, a, really, that's a really good question. So um, the first and most important thing there is actually, and maybe we'll come on to this in a little bit, but actually the sequences will always end. That's actually really important. Uh, that, that's the sort of deeper mathematics going under this, is that you're not going to be able to um, construct a, an infinite sequence of graphs which follow these rules. It's just not possible. So there's always going to be a longest one. Actually, that's, even that's not actually automatic. You can imagine there might, be, um, there might be sequences of arbitrarily long finite length, but uh, that's also not true. So there, there is definitely a maximum length. And I think, I think most people are pretty, who've looked at it are pretty convinced by Adam Goucher's answer that this is, uh, this is the, the, the longest possible one. So that's SSCG2, so we can carry on and look at three. How big do you think that might be? And we could start with, uh, so it's going to start, we need to have at most four, and we could start with something like this. I think that's probably a promising one to start with. The next one's the most five, and so on and so on. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that, how big that one might be? I'm going large. Um, <laughs> it's going to be large. I mean, it's got to be bigger than 10 to the 10 to 28. I'm going to say this is your we don't know moment. <laughs> um, we know it's very, very big. Uh, and by which I mean it's bigger than just about any number you could write down by any means. There's a famously enormous number called tree 3. Yes. This, this number is actually bigger than tree 3. For the people who know about this, that's saying quite something, right? Because that's a, that's a famously huge number. Both of these actually were uh, invented by the, the sequences were invented by the same guy, Harvey Friedman, uh, who's a, a, an American logician who's sort of coincidentally, he's done some stuff which has generated just bigger numbers than just about anyone else has uh, come up with, including these. But he's done some really deep logic which are, underlies where, where these numbers come from. So maybe, maybe I'll uh, come back to that in a little bit. So this is a, this is a really, really, really huge number, this third uh, subcubic graph number. Um, I know people always want to like make things bigger, so there is actually a way we can slightly tweak it by making these even bigger. Can I have another sheet of paper? We're, we're going bigger by ditching simplicity. So we define simple graphs as being graphs where you're not allowed loops and you're not allowed parallel edges. So we can do the whole thing that we just did, but allowing those. So these are more general, these are more general subcubic graphs. Still have to be subcubic, and the notion of hiding inside is the same. Basically, all the other rules are the same, but we're just going to allow graphs with. It, so in the first really early examples yeah. you showed me, that didn't really become an issue anyway. Well, you'll see. I mean, you can go. So you can get slightly longer sequences once we allow subcubic graphs. So, so just going back to the first one. So less than or equal to one, less than or equal to two, less than or equal to three. 
So actually, if we've got one loop, there's a bit more we can do now if we're allowed a loop, because we can put one with a loop. Remember what hiding means. This will now mean we couldn't have any cycles, okay? So there couldn't be any circuit where we come back, otherwise you'd find this one hiding in it. But and we can have two connected with a, a single edge, uh, and then we can then, then after this point, we can't have any edges at all. So you can have then three, and then we're down to two, and then one and then our, our empty graph. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the first, or well, the zeroth subcubic graph number is uh, six. Okay, and just to remind myself, when when we had the other rule, it was two. It was two, yeah. yeah. So, we, so we've got bigger. We could ask what the next one is. Where we're allowed to start with the most two. I don't know, I'm having fun asking you, so what do you think? So okay. remember with, when we were, when we were in, in the simple world, it, you, it was five, okay? Okay, uh, I'm gonna go 139. Okay, it's a good guess, but uh, you've underestimated again. Yes, uh, <laughs> I tend to do that with you. <laughs> uh, it's again, um, I mean, we're already now in the realms of enormous numbers, actually. Right. So this is, for example, this is bigger than Graham's number. No. Yeah. So it's not as big as tree three, but it is, no, by any ordinary numbers, this is, this is, this is absolutely huge. Um, so it's obvious, I think, that the, the general subcubic graph numbers are always going to be bigger than the simple subcubic graph numbers, because you've still got the simple uh, ones, you can use them, but you, then you can use more as well, yeah. I'm gonna skip two, because we haven't got that much to say about that, but if you remember, SSGC3 was enormous, bigger than tree three. This one's uh, much, much bigger than that again, and in fact, uh, so this is not only bigger than tree three, uh, it's bigger than tree of tree three, so I, I, I ex I'll explain what that means. I mean, there's, we've got the sequence, the tree sequence, which goes tree one, tree two, tree three, and tree three is this enormous number, and then tree four, tree five, tree six, and so on. This number I've written down here is tree of tree three, so it's the tree three th entry in this uh, this sequence. So, so the little number sitting next to the tree here happens to be tree exactly. three. Yeah, yeah, and actually we can we can keep going. It's actually bigger than tree of that. <laughs> is it? It is, yeah. Uh, how many times do you think we can do it? <laughs> you always catch me out here. Tree three times? Oh, good guess. You can, you can. So this, we could write this one as tree cubed three, yeah. And this number here is actually bigger than tree, tree three of three. This is all based on uh, Adam Goucher's work. When I said tree three times, yeah. and you said, oh, good guess, we, was that that number, or was that? No, this is this oh, that, number. So, that's so, my number. Yeah, yeah, so this is your number. We're, so we're, we're repeating this process we're applying the tree operator tree three times. This is numbers where it's very difficult to sort of say anything about the size because tree three itself is already you know far beyond the usual technology we use to write down big numbers. You know, if you want to write a tower of tens, this is far beyond that. We've got Knuth hours, which is really powerful notation, but this is far beyond anything you can touch with uh, touch with those. So the subcubic graph number is you know another another level uh, beyond that. Yeah. So these are really really seriously big numbers. They are serious. They are serious. Now, sometimes um, when you get the sort of surprise appearance of really massive numbers, it's actually telling us something interesting. I mean, it's fun. I mean, we all like big numbers, but um, there's actually something under the surface here which is uh, really mathematically important. Uh, so I'm gonna, I guess I'm sort of switching from the Googleology. Googleology is sort of playing around with big numbers because it's fun and we love big numbers. But there's actually some really serious deep mathematics underlying that. And the key result here is a result called the graph minor theorem. So the, uh, the graph minor theorem is this enormous uh, result in graph theory. Um, it's proved by um, Neil Robertson and Paul Seymour in a series of 20 papers, the most recent of which was um, in 2004. Actually, I've got a good, good quote from uh, this book. So this is a, a textbook on graph theory by Reinhard de Stel, sort of in industry standard uh, graph theory textbook. He says, this result dwarfs any other result in graph theory and may doubtless be counted among the deepest theorems that mathematics has to offer. So it's like a really, really serious bit of mathematics that. The basic statement is whenever you've got some infinite collection of finite graphs, right? So I'm drawing lots of pictures of, of finite graphs and actually it doesn't matter whether we want to focus on simple graphs or whether we want to allow um, what we might call multi-graphs where you've got the loops and parallel edges. Either way is fine. But they've got to be finite graphs, so finite numbers of vertices, finite numbers of edges. So whenever you've got an infinite collection of them, you can always find a pair, it's called them A and B, somewhere in there where A is 
sort of hiding inside B, or more technically, A is a minor of B. And what it means to be a, for one graph to be a minor of another is that from, from B, you can get A back, firstly by deleting some edges, deleting some nodes, but also by contracting edges. So if we've got some sort of structure like this, then we can just sort of squeeze that edge away and merge these two vertices. Whenever you've got an infinite collection of finite graphs, you can always find um, a pair such that one is a minor of the other, meaning you can, you can find A inside by um, either deleting edges, deleting nodes, or doing this edge contraction, right? That's a slightly different notion of hiding inside than we had earlier. Um, but actually, earlier we were focusing on subcubic graphs, and it turns out that the two are the same for subcubic graphs. So, so I give that slightly sort of easier formulation. In general, the, being a minor is the is the is the right notion. So I guess this is the point where I'm sort of going to delve into the logic a little bit. If that's okay, if you're happy, yeah, let's do it. At the time of releasing this video, our channel sponsor Jane Street is taking applications for its next internship program. This is a chance to join one of their international teams, perhaps launch your own career to somewhere really special. Jane Street's an international quantitative trading firm and they're on the lookout for bright and curious people. If you've got a brain for things like machine learning, software engineering, statistics, programmable hardware, research, all that good stuff, this might be your big opportunity. No finance experience is necessary and Jane Street will cover any travel and accommodation costs, plus some pretty competitive compensation. Last time around, they took people from 100 different schools and 24 countries. Sounds like something you might like? Check out the details in the description and all the usual places below.